Good afternoon everyone, my name is Benjamin and welcome to a look at today at the reasonable paths for Democrats to retake the, the presidency in 2020. And I'm not going to be doing this as like a regional breakdown saying, well, you've got a few different paths and they all centered throughout through one of them, one of the regions in the United States, like a southern route, a southwestern route, a midwestern route, because that's not the way it works. Yes, there are some correlations, you know, for example, if you're winning Ohio, you're probably winning Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, if you're a Democrat, you know, if you're winning Texas, you're probably winning Arizona, too. Uh, if you're winning Georgia, you're probably going to win North Carolina. But the real way that Democrats can t retake the White House is going to involve a few things. And the first is a is the folk is focusing on sw a few swing states. So let's say they're fo and these are and it's going to be based off of the states they need to flip from 2016. Which is maybe a disingenuous way to look at things. Because if you look at... So I'm actually not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to take states that I think are going to be, you know, reasonably competitive. In 2020... And when I say reasonably competitive... I'm going to say both candidates can make a credible play for those states in those votes. Okay. So this is actually a surprise. This is about what I think the battleground map is going to start off as. And you're not going to have, you know, say... A southern route which goes through here and everything else remains the same as 2016 right because that just isn't a realistic map instead you're going to have to look at correlations Democrats could have a narrow focus, meaning they're going to need to play for North Carolina. Let's also start by assuming Democrats hold on to every state they won in 20, uh, everything they won in 2016. Okay, so that puts them at 232. <clears throat> so they do need to expand the map. Well, the obvious place to start is they're going to need to make a play for North Carolina, probably going to need to make a play for Michigan, and you still need a vote somewhere else. From what I can tell, those votes are probably going to come from Wisconsin or Florida and maybe both. You might get Pennsylvania too. But notice this still leaves a lot on the table for the Republicans and Donald Trump. And it shows a, a bit of a weakening coalition for the Democrats in their traditional strong, uh, in one of their traditional uh, historical strongholds in the Rust Belt in the upper Midwest. You know, they could make a play for the South but they still are going to need to win the upper Midwest. Because if they take this route and don't improve the battleground from anywhere else, Donald Trump could make a play saying in Minnesota saying, listen, they don't really care about you. They're trying to win Southern votes, not your votes. Could make the same argument in Nevada, maybe Maine. But, I mean, that's still not enough, so he'd have to maintain at least Georgia.
But if you only, but if they were only able to pick off North Carolina and Florida and weren't able to get the the votes from Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, oops, I messed up there. Yes, they would very narrowly win by flipping this vote. Or never mind. Ah, sorry, I forgot about Nevada. You know, that's one way. So let's look at another possible route which is to say, okay, well, let's play for more of a southwestern strategy. We're trying to get Arizona. Actually, I'll go ahead and include Texas. I, I don't know why I forgot to include Texas. They could try to make a play for Arizona and Texas, but in doing so, they're not going to win Texas. If they do, they're already winning in a landslide. But let's say they pick off Arizona. They're probably still going to lose some of these traditional areas. And actually manage to focus heavily enough for Arizona to take advantage of demographic shifts. I'm going to assume they keep Pencil, uh, not Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia and Minnesota, right? I don't think they're getting Florida. And that really hurts. They're not winning that vote. They might win, probably would win the statewide vote. Very close, and it comes down to these three states again. I wouldn't underestimate Trump. Um, by the way, if he wins Pennsylvania, the worst he can do is tie. And I don't think winning Pennsylvania is that much of a lift for Trump. He's already done it once when he was the... You know, when it was considered less, even less likely than it is nowadays. So, yeah, it's possible. So this could be a reasonable map. This could be a reasonable, reasonable map. You know, it all, it, it just depends. And that's the thing. You have to be exploring multiple pathways to victory rather than Focusing on, well, we're going to focus on these three states because if we flip these three states, we win automatically. Because that assumes that you keep literally everything else. Yeah, they'll probably keep Minnesota as part of it, but if they're focusing so heavily on these three states, you can kiss goodbye to maybe those that group of states. You might even piss off Maine. You have to be playing a wide battleground. And that's what Trump understood. I'm actually going to go to a blank map and show you states that Trump visited during the last few months of his campaign uh, that are considered swing states. He visited Arizona. And I'll show them in the colors that they actually were. Nevada. I think he did. Yeah, he did. Don't remember if he visited Georgia, but I'm pretty sure he did. He definitely visited Florida. He visited Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, Ohio, and Iowa as well. Don't remember if he visited that in the campaign, but I'm pretty sure he did. Look at that wide battleground. He had multiple pathways to victory. He could have won in the Southwest and, you know, the traditional Republican way. He could have won the way he wound up doing. Sorry. He played in a wide variety of locations. Hillary Clinton... Clinton? No. Hillary Clinton did not play to as wide of a crowd. She did visit Pennsylvania, if I remember correctly. But, it's, but she ignored a few states that were important. She focused too heavily on trying to expand the battleground when all she needed to do was play defense. And what wound up happening was that she lost because she was playing too narrow a battleground of states. So if you're a Democrat, you need to be trying to, yes, flip these states back.
but you also need to play a little defense. in those states that you won in 2016, you also need to focus on trying to maybe expand the map a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. You don't have to go for, you don't have to go for glory and go through Georgia and Texas. Yes, those can be options, but the truth is, if a Democrat's winning Texas, they're winning the election pretty handedly already. Texas is what I would call icing on the cake. If a Democrat is winning Texas, they've already won the election. Yes, keep the pathway open, but don't make it the centerpiece of your campaign. The truth is, the place where Donald Trump was, you know, campaigning, actually had a chance of tipping the election on election night. And his order of states he visited most during his camp during the last few weeks of his campaign closely matched the forecast what would have been forecasted as the tipping point states according to 538, a.k.a. the states that would be most likely to give a candidate their 270th electoral vote. So that should be the focus of both campaigns, is campaigning in states that could be the tipping point, rather than just playing the traditional battleground states. So that's why I say this is the battleground that I am looking at entering 2020. Yeah, it's a bit wide. It may be overly wide, but it's important to look at states that are changing, states that flipped a little bit, you know, traditional swing states, traditional battleground states, but also mid-sized states that could be the deciding factor. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Bye.